guys it's rose and welcome back to sheep lazy vegan so i'm about to head to h mart which is if you guys don't know it's like a korean i think it's a korean american store i could be wrong but anyway they just recently opened one here in my city so i am about to go and check it out i'm gonna go there and i'm gonna pick up some vegan goodies some accidentally vegan items and then i'm gonna show you guys what i got so very exciting let's go shopping It's actually been a few hours since I went shopping. I bought a whole bunch of stuff, much more than I had anticipated, but of course, that's just me. So I'm gonna show you guys what I got. I ended up going to the gym, I had dinner, and um, now I finally have a chance to record this haul. So let's, let's see. So this is the damage. I don't know if you guys can see the extent of the damage, but here we are. It was quite damaging for the wallet, yes. Let me actually see how much I spent. <laughs> All right, so it looks like I spent $121.85. Whew, no wonder it was so heavy. So I had to lug all of this, guys. I know, I brought a backpack. I brought two uh, large grocery bags. And yeah, so this is the damage. Let me show you guys what I got. All right, friends, I don't even know where to start. Where should we start? This is just don't look at this okay so right here some refrigerated items i guess i mean i tried to organize it but i feel like everything is just kind of everything is kind of miscellaneous so let's start with here these are korean peppers these are green peppers they're actually not spicy at all i ate one already <laughs> and um you dip it into samjang and samjang is like a dipping sauce a korean dipping sauce i have a recipe for it you can also buy samjang in the grocery store and you can just use that as a dipping sauce for all kinds of veggies and this is so good with samjang you can have this with samjang and rice and it is the bomb it's very korean okay once again this is not spicy although sometimes you can get like a really spicy one and then you might die Next thing, so this is Tambuji, aka why does this not focus? Oh my god, guys, I might need a new camera. This camera has been holding on to dear life. So this is pickled radish. I guess they call it preserved radish. So I buy the one that isn't yellow. The one that you've seen, maybe it's like really, really bright yellow, and apparently that's really bad for you. So I buy the ones that aren't yellow. It's a little bit more expensive, but also the yellow stuff I think causes cancer. So um, I'd rather pay a little extra, like a few extra dollars, to not get cancer. So that's why I got this one. This is gonna last like forever because it's like pickled So I just keep it in the fridge and then whenever I want to make like kimbap or Whatever I want to eat this with this is there. Okay, so yeah, this is like the whole pickled radish Yeah next guys. I have silken tofu. This is the same I guess as extra firm tofu. This is by sunrise. I've never actually seen this particular uh one from this brand before i normally buy one um like a korean brand so i thought i would try this one and yeah it's basically really 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 soft tofu it's very custardy it's so good it's one of my favorite types of tofu it's good in soups it's good in i don't know so many different ways can't wait to try this one i, I assume it's going to be the same as the korean one who knows next i thought i would get a random a uh, what is this like an asian pear yeah korean pear let's see what it looks like i feel like normally they're bigger than this but um yeah it was just there and it was calling my name so korean pear i don't know if this is a korean pear asian pear apparently it's kind of small usually it's like bigger i think hopefully it's tasty it was calling my name next in the fruit category this is kind of random but i saw it it was calling my name apparently it's a product of new zealand i bought some gold kiwis kiwis are supposed to be really good for you and i feel like i don't eat enough kiwi oh i just realized new zealand kiwi okay makes sense i don't know it was like on sale i think this whole thing was like maybe 6.99 or something is that cheap i'm not sure hopefully they're tasty i feel like kiwis are hit or miss but yeah they're supposed to be really good for you so uh, yeah, bought some kiwis. Next, enoki mushrooms. Um, if you guys know me but at all, enoki mushrooms are the greatest. And I just had to get some. They're great uh, in soups. They're great in lots of things. You can also stir fry them. I just love the texture of enoki mushrooms. If you've tried enoki mushrooms, you know the deal. You know, you know how good it is. I don't know why it's so addictive. It has like a really interesting kind of popping texture and it's so good. When I was young, 
I used to hate mushrooms except for enoki mushrooms. Now I love all mushrooms, but I still love enoki mushrooms. Next, okay, I bought this giant thing of Inari, aka fried bean curd, seasoned fried bean curd. So this is how you make that Inari sushi, okay, using this. Now this is a giant thing here. I wanted to get a smaller one, but I checked the ingredients list for some of them and they were not vegan. A lot of them actually have fish ingredients. I didn't even think that this would possibly be not vegan, but some of them had fish ingredients. Some of them had like egg. I don't even know, okay? I felt cheated. You know when you see something that's supposed to be vegan and then it has like some random animal ingredient and you feel like the world's falling apart. Yeah, that's basically what happened. But this one was vegan, so I got this one. I mean, I'm probably just gonna freeze some of it once I open it because I feel like I can't eat this all in like a week. So yeah, but very excited about this. It's so good. So if you don't know, it's like fried bean curd and it's like a little pocket. So you fill it up with like sushi rice and it's so good. I'm gonna do a video on this so that you guys know how to make it and I'm gonna show you different topping ideas and all that good stuff. Okay, so next here we have two bags of this seasoned seaweed, roasted laver. Okay, I, I, like, how do you say that, laver? Who says this? Nobody says this. Anyways, it's roasted seaweed, basically. Um, in Korean, we call it kim. We love this stuff. It is like a staple, but my only problem is that they always come in these little annoying packages that have like three pieces of seaweed in them. Okay, I'm exaggerating. There's probably like maybe 10 sheets or something per package and it's annoying because sometimes I want to eat like 20 sheets or 30 sheets, but it's such a waste of packaging. Ugh, it's annoying, but either way, they had some kind of sale, two for something. I can't remember how much, but that's why I got this. Hopefully this one has, you know, a good amount in one package because the most annoying thing about this, who is this dude? I don't know. Most annoying thing about these is that there's like not much in one package and it's a huge waste of plastic and packaging and ugh. anyways that's a lot of packaging <laughs> i'm sorry guys okay okay let me just sit down okay here we have in the back this is actually what i had for dinner mm. so bibimian bibimen i don't know why they call it bibimen so bibimen it's basically uh spicy noodles spicy cold noodles and this one is like the instant version so basically you just you know it's like instant ramen but looks like this so you cook it up according to instructions and then you rinse it with cold water and then you mix it with the sauce that's provided in this packaging and you can top it with whatever you want i had this for dinner it was so good so i had this with uh smoked tofu and kimchi and also a side of cauliflower that i just like cooked up quickly because I can't just eat this alone for dinner because I'm gonna be so hungry if I just eat this because it's like instant noodles. Like for me, if I eat instant noodles, I always have to add some kind of protein and I try to add some kind of vegetable to at least make it a little bit healthier and give it some nutritional you know, benefit. That's my tip for eating instant noodles. Don't just eat the instant noodles, add something, like add some kind of protein, add some kind of veggie, and it'll just make it so much better. So had that for dinner, it was so good. I bought two only because it was like two for, I don't know, maybe it was like $7. And each one has like, I think five, four or five um, of these individual things. I'm not gonna eat it all, you know, in a week, okay? I mean, it's not the best thing for you, but it's good to have. It's very convenient and it's so delicious. All right, next. So I don't usually buy tteokbokki that is like pre-made or store-bought tteokbokki, but I thought I would try it out. So this one happened to be vegan friendly. Um, I just checked the ingredients list. I basically spent a lot of time today checking ingredients lists because um, with Korean products, it's like they won't be marked vegan, okay? Because it's not really a thing, at least not much of a thing compared to the Western world where a lot of things might be marked vegan. But in Korea, there's a lot of things that might be like accidentally vegan and stuff like that. So I just have to check the ingredients list very often. Usually tteokbokki, which is spicy Korean rice cakes, this thing right here, usually it has like some sort of fish paste or anchovies or something in the broth or the sauce but this one was actually vegan friendly and so that's why i got it and yeah i just thought i would try it out i do have a recipe for this you can make this at home it's actually really easy you just need the rice cakes which you can find in like 
all Korean supermarkets basically so I would look for the rice cakes and they look like this okay they look like this <laughs> and then you can just make it at home which is super easy and it probably tastes better to be honest so I'll link that recipe below but this one yeah I just decided to get it just to try it out and see how it would taste and see if it is worth buying for the convenience or if the taste is just not there I'll let you guys know if I do try it I might try it for a mukbang video we'll see we'll see all right, so another kind of instant product. Uh, why am I buying so much instant products? I just like wanted to try everything and I'm just very curious about these sort of convenience foods. I feel like Korea, they know how to make really good convenience foods. So I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of try out a few things. Um, and if you guys can find this, you can also get this. This one also is another one of those things that you have to check the ingredients list. Um, this is like PB. It's kind of similar to that, okay? But this one's like, I guess, less of like an instant sort of thing, even though it is kind of instant. I don't know. And this is basically like a spicy uh, buckwheat noodle. And I can make this at home, but I thought I would try this quick meal version. Once again, just out of curiosity. So again, another one of those kind of instant meals that would be convenient for busy, lazy days. All right, next, my friends. So this is... Uh, how do I call this? I think it's called knife noodles. So in Korean, we call this kalguksu or son kalguksu. I think that means it's like cut by hand. Kalguksu is like really famous type of uh, Korean noodles. And I think it's called kalguksu because kal is like knife and then guksu means noodles. And I guess they cut it with a knife. I, Guys. Am I a bad Korean? I don't know. Don't these noodles look so good though? <laughs> I had to get it. And I haven't had kalguksu for a very long time and I feel like I need to make a vegan version of kalguksu. But I feel like I could also do other things with these really delicious looking noodles. So I wanted to get it. Um, I got so many noodles, I realized. I literally have like just a ridiculous amount of noodles. So yeah, noodles, yay, uh, more noodles. So this one, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I just bought it. Okay, it was calling my name. It looks so good. It just looks really fresh. So this is kagoksu. Hopefully it's delicious. It looks delicious. Can't wait to try it. And guys, I might get in trouble for this, okay? Am I gonna get in trouble? So this, my friends, I need you to tell me, is this vegan? <laughs> this is the famous Indomie Mi Goreng fried noodles. Stir fried noodles. This is like the Indonesian version of instant noodles. It is like super popular and famous and I have always wanted to know if this is vegan friendly and I checked the back and I swear guys it has to be vegan. There is nothing that indicates that it is not vegan. I mean other than palm oil which I know is controversial but unfortunately I don't avoid palm oil. I mean okay let me just do a little look. Tell me. Do you see it guys? Is there anything that's not vegan? Because I don't see it. I mean, this is definitely not healthy. I didn't buy this for my health, okay? But I just wanted to, I feel like I haven't had this in like years and I forgot what it tastes like. I'm pretty sure I had this when I went to Indonesia like 10 years ago. Uh, this is pre-vegan, pre like anything. And uh, I don't remember what it tastes like and I don't think I've had it since. Yeah, let me know, am I gonna be in trouble? Is this not vegan? I feel like it's vegan, but I could be wrong. <sighs> Don't hate me, okay? Sometimes with like instant noodles and stuff, like the ingredients are so, you know, it's obviously a lot of ingredients, so it's hard to tell. Anyways, I bought it, okay? It's done, it's done. But if you tell me it's not vegan, I won't buy it again, okay? <sighs> okay, so let's go into some of the freezer items, okay? Guys, it's en français because I live in, uh, Canada, so we are bilingual, okay? Mochi glacé, dessert, thé vert. That means green tea, my friends, okay? Sorry for the bad pronunciation. So this is non-dairy, okay, you can see. Apparently it's also gluten-free. And uh, this is mochi, green tea mochi. Green tea is one of my favorite things ever. Uh, matcha is one of the best things best flavors in the world and uh, mochi is also very delicious so this is like a nice ice cream dessert if you haven't tried mochi what have you been doing in your life you must try it it's so good it's basically like a rice cake i don't know how to describe it it's like really really chewy and um, inside of the mochi is ice cream this is so good 
Anyways, if you can find this, I'm pretty sure I've tried this before. So I pretty much know it's good. You really can't mess this up. Next thing I bought, um, I thought this would be interesting for you guys. So this is Korean pancake. Um, this is taro flavor, which I've never tried. In Korea, this is called hotdog. Hotdog, and it's like a street food. It's like a really popular type of street food. Normally inside these Korean pancakes, it's like brown sugar filling, and it's like really, really sweet and really good. And this brand had that version, the kind of like sugar version, but I wanted to try the taro version because I don't know, I really like taro, so I thought that would be potentially good. And anyway, the dough is like really greasy, and uh, I'm pretty sure I've tried this brand before. And it was pretty good. This is vegan friendly. Um, the ingredients aren't crazy actually. Where are the ingredients? Come on, where are you? Look at the ingredients. It's actually not bad. Sorry, palm oil is in everything. Oh my God, kill me. I don't know what to do with myself. The ingredients, pretty simple. And I am excited to try this. This goes in the freezer, my friends. Next, had to get some dumplings, of course. These are some dumplings that you can pan fry. These are very interestingly shaped dumplings. They're like really flat like this, and then you pan fry them, and they're basically just ready to eat. What I usually do with these type of things is that I pop them in the microwave, because they're frozen, right? So I pop them in the microwave for like maybe 30 seconds or something, and then I uh, throw it onto a pan with a bit of oil, and then just pan fry it until it's kind of nice and golden like this. Ooh, and this one is the uh, crispy vermicelli dumpling. It is uh, vegetarian, this one, and you know, the ingredients list is basically an essay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's vegan yay <laughs> okay so yeah if you go to like an asian supermarket they usually will have some sort of frozen dumplings that are vegan friendly just look at the ingredients list look for the vegetable uh dumpling and then just look for the ingredients list to make sure that it's vegan friendly okay so that's the one i got and then next on the frozen item list this is normally something i don't buy frozen i just buy them uh not frozen <laughs> But this was in the frozen section and they were two for something. It was very cheap. I think it was like two for one. So I was like, okay, I need to get it. So udon. Mm -hmm. Frozen udon. Yes. I feel like this would taste better than the non-frozen kind. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know what? Let me show you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the kind that I normally would use and I normally would have. And you can just keep this in your pantry. You don't have to freeze it. So that's what I normally buy. But I decided my freezer apparently wasn't full enough, so I decided to get two of these frozen udon noodles. And I think these ones are a bit bigger for serving, but they come in these, you know, individualized, uh, you know, individual servings, which is very convenient. And um, I think you cook them just like you would cook, I don't know, the other kind. And they're pretty much like pre-cooked, I think. So you just throw them into whatever. And yeah, this was in the frozen section. I know there were some people that were having a hard time finding this, but you can find these potentially in the frozen section of an Asian supermarket, or you can find the other ones in a non-frozen section in the noodles section. So I got two of these just because they were on sale because I had to get two to get the deal, okay? God, I got so much stuff. All right, guys, now for my final little miscellaneous corner. This is the most miscellaneous, okay? Random little things, bits and bobs that I wanted to get, mainly for you guys, okay? I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> okay, I bought this random thing. This is some sort of, I believe, a Japanese. Oh, by the way, okay, for those of you that are not Japanese, or Korean, comment below if you guys can tell the difference between Japanese writing, Korean writing, and Chinese characters. Because, I mean, obviously I can tell because I can read Korean, but I don't know if you guys can kind of tell the difference. Like, I'm trying to, like, yeah, let me know. Like, is it obviously different for you or is it not so obvious? Anyways, this is Japanese, okay? So, wheat cake, um, I don't really know. I think this one is filled with a uh, red bean and it just looked kind of good <laughs> and it was vegan friendly so i was like okay i'm gonna have to try it of course um once it's vegan friendly i'm like okay take my money so this one i think is filled with red bean yes so red bean is something that asians commonly use for desserts sweetened red bean paste is often used in asian like pastries and desserts and it's really really good so i think this one's going to be filled with red bean i think it would make a really yummy snack uh potentially a quick breakfast with coffee oh my god 
I think I'm gonna have this with some black coffee. That would be so yummy. That's the wheat cake. Hopefully it's delicious. I think I squeezed it a little bit in my backpack. All right, next, this one, guys. I bought some natto, so. Let me tell you, I've tried natto before. For those of you that don't know, it's like a fermented soybean thingy that has like a weird consistency, a weird texture. It's like really popular in Japan. I think a lot of Japanese people eat this with rice for breakfast. And it's like really pungent, has a very distinct smell and taste. And I remember not liking this before, <laughs> but people have told me it is an acquired taste. So I'm like, okay. Maybe I need to acquire some taste. I really want to like it. I don't know why I want to like this, but I really want to like this. Maybe because I've been told it's so healthy and I feel like I can like it. Yeah, so I bought it. But one thing to note about natto is that um, pretty much every other brand other than this one, this one is a Korean brand and other brands like the Japanese ones all had some sort of animal products in it. I mean, the beans themselves are obviously uh, vegan, but I think the Japanese brands, they put a lot of fish product into the sauce that comes in these packages. But this one, I checked the ingredients list and it was vegan. And also the ingredients list for this one was a lot shorter than the other ones. So I'm gonna assume this one's maybe a little bit healthier. So yeah, I got this one because this one was the only one that didn't have any animal products in it. So I'm excited to try this. Uh, also very nervous. I don't know if I'm gonna hate it. <laughs> have you guys ever done this? Cause like, I don't know, is that weird? I know I've tried it before. I know I didn't really like it, but I'm gonna try it again because apparently I wanna like it. So I don't know, I don't know. What do you guys think? Have you tried natto before? Let me know guys, let me know. All right friends, what's next? So this snack, oh my God. I love this snack, my friends. It is a very crispy, not a crispy, how do I say it? It's very crunchy, that's what I'm looking for. Very crunchy snack. It's kind of sweet, and I think it's made of sweet potato. Let me check. No, I just made that up. It's not made of, no. They call it sweet potato shape biscuit. <laughs> but there's no sweet potato. <laughs> it's basically just wheat and sugar and oil. Great, fantastic, very healthy. But yeah, uh, I don't know why it's called sweet potato uh, snack because there's no sweet potato, but it tastes so good, you guys. This is like really good, okay? You wanna be careful, you don't wanna eat too much at once, okay? But it's a really yummy snack, and I remember, I think, when I moved to Italy, and I was there for like six months. I was studying abroad in Italy. This was like 10 years ago. My parents bought me like a million of these and I had them in my closet and I would just snack on it all the time. Before I left, basically, I brought these to Italy. And so, yeah, anyway, they're really, really good. They're really crunchy and they're just so good. I don't know, like, I don't know how they make it so good. It's probably not good for you at all, but it's tasty. So if you can find these in your Korean grocery store, Highly recommend. Okay, I'll show you this thing. I already drank it. <laughs> so this is a little drink. I was a little disappointed because, how do I describe this drink? So shikhe, shikhe. So shikhe is like a very traditional sweetened Korean drink. It is fermented rice punch. Wow, they're calling it fermented rice punch. Interesting. So it is a fermented rice drink. It's super sweet and usually there's like bits of rice in the drink. It's a sweet drink that is made by fermenting rice. And I know that sounds weird, but it is so, so good. And usually there's like bits of rice in the drink itself. That's how traditionally it's made. So there's like the liquid and then there's some like bits of softened rice that has been sitting in there for a while. And I love the kind of rice pulp, I guess you could call it. It's so, so good. That's how I drank it. That's how I had it when I was a child. My grandma used to make this and she would make it in really big batches and we would have it all the time. It was so, so good. And they do sell it in these little cans. So I bought it and I was a bit disappointed because this one actually didn't have any of the rice pulp which I mean, I guess if you're not used to that, that's probably like better for you because you might think it's a bit weird that there's like rice in your drink, but I'm so used to it. So I was wanting some of that rice pulp, but this one particularly did not have it. It was still really tasty, this one right here. So if you guys wanna try it, um, it might be in your Korean supermarket. It's so good, you guys, you have to try it. But yeah, I wanted, I wanted the rice pulp, guys. I just wanted the rice pulp. All right, next, uh, this is not a Korean product. I don't know why I got this. 
I just wanted it. I love grass jelly in my bubble tea. Do you guys like grass jelly? I love grass jelly in my bubble tea. I don't know why, but I really like it. I like the texture and I kind of wanted to get this and maybe put it into, I don't know, some sort of a dessert. Uh, any ideas? Let me know. It was sitting there. I was intrigued. I wanted to get it, so I did. Uh, maybe I'll make my own bubble tea and add some grass jelly. I don't know what country this is from. Hmm. This one is from Taiwan. All right, product of Taiwan. There you go. Agar agar jelly. Okay. So this right here, you guys, chocolate flavored soy drink. Have you guys had these? I feel like I had these when I was really young. This was quite popular, I remember. If you're Asian, you've probably had this before. Basically just a uh, box soy milk box yes soy milk box and this one is chocolate flavored yum chocolate flavored soy milk where is this from maybe taiwan again who knows the uk no it was manufactured in hong kong imported into singapore distributed in malaysia imported by uk oh my god ugh capitalism all right last but not least i have these chestnut snacks I actually bought three of these. One I already opened and I already started snacking on. I bought three because there was like another sale, three for something. And guys, if you've never had chestnuts, you need to reevaluate your existence. Chestnuts are amazing. So these are chestnut snacks. They're basically just little pieces of chestnut that have been, I believe, roasted or cooked somehow. So the only uh, ingredient in this are chestnuts. And if you've never tried chestnuts, you need to reevaluate your existence and try chestnuts as soon as possible. I know they're not very available in uh, Canada, for example, but in certain countries like Korea, chestnuts are really, really popular and I love them. They are so, so good. I could literally snack on this all day long if I could. They're so addictive. I've had them roasted in Korea on the streets. They'll sell them like roasted, like really hot. And, oh my god, they're so, so good, you guys. They're kind of like ah, a cross between a sweet potato and maybe like some sort of a nut. I don't know. Um, it's like a slightly more nutty sweet potato. I don't know how to describe it. It's so good. Let me show you, actually, since I already opened uh, one of these bags up. All right, so this is what it looks like. It doesn't look very appetizing, but I swear to you, it's so good. Let me show you. So this is what it looks like. So usually chestnuts have this like hard shell, but this one is like shelled, so it's really easy to eat. Mmm, it's so good. The best snack ever. If you can find this, it's so good. When I was young, my parents would steam chestnuts and then you crack it with your teeth, the shell, and then we have these little spoons, these tiny little spoons to scoop them out. If you're Korean, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> They're so good. Love them so much. There you go. All right, guys, so that is it for my pretty giant grocery haul. This came to 121 something Canadian dollars, which I think is like probably 90 American. I'm not sure. Yeah, so not the cheapest haul, but this haul wasn't supposed to be like budget friendly. I just kind of wanted to buy a variety of different things and show you guys and also uh, try out a bunch of, you know, exciting vegan things. And remember that these are like all pretty much imported, which obviously adds to the cost. I also want to note that I do have a video where I discuss some of my kind of must have Asian ingredients. That video is actually, I think much more helpful for you guys if you're like starting out with Asian cooking, for example, or Korean cooking. I kind of go through some of the ingredients that I always have in my house, things that I always cook with. I think that would be a lot more helpful. This is just kind of more specialty things that I don't usually buy, but um, because I already have all of the things that I always use in my house, I didn't buy them, so I didn't show them here. But if you guys want to know kind of the things that I normally would have in my house to cook with, ingredients that I always use, and kind of the breakdown of how how I use them. I do have a video on that, so I'm gonna link that down below, and hopefully that's helpful for you. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this video, if you guys liked it. Let me know if you guys enjoy grocery hauls. I know they used to be like really popular on my channel from way back in the day. I don't do them as often anymore, but um, if you enjoy them, let me know. I will link a grocery haul playlist down below so you guys can check out my older grocery hauls that are also a little bit more budget friendly as well. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up. 
And of course, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Bye.